What do we think of this... Uh, uh, well, two things. The queue, right, first of all, and then the queue jumpers. This has become a huge scandal. Um, pretty overblown, in my view. But the queue, first of all, what did it tell you, Tina, about Britain? When you came back and saw... You've been spending a lot of time in America yeah. in the last few decades. What do you, when you saw that queue... Well, what you saw was that the queue had become, in a sense, it, the, the people's own give back to the Queen. So, I mean, person after person said the same thing. After, 70, after se her giving us 70 years of duty, it was the least I could do. So the queue became this act of, of gift to the Queen, waiting. So, and I mean, actually reflected, I think, and again, I wrote this in my, my song column, I think it reflected all the virtues of the Queen. Yeah. Resilience, sure. hard work, determination. Right. Courage, right. you know, humility, doing something for somebody else, not yourself. Yeah, and talking get, to strangers. Talking to strangers <laughs> and getting on with it. You and know? getting um, on with it. Getting Richard, on with it. It, was, it was the personification of all things which actually made this country great, which I think we should be looking to get back into. Oh, completely. I mean, I joined... I was, I was lucky it was only five and a half hours. Mm. But you did. You, you get to the back of the queue and, and you start talking to people. Mm. And you start chatting, you make friendships. And it really was. It was... The Brits love a queue, but this was the queue of all queues. Mm -hmm. And I think there was something just rather rather special about it. And some people, some very famous people joined the back of the queue. David Beckham famously joined the back of the queue. And whether you're cynical about his motivation, it went down very well with people that he didn't take a, a VIP route like no. President Biden and others, who, of course, weren't able to do that. But there were people like uh, Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield, who, who front this morning, one of the big programmes in, in this country, obviously. Um, who took advantage of, a, of an opportunity for journalists. I know, Richard, your own partner, Isabel, is defending herself for doing the same thing and actually put up a pretty good defence. Um, but here they are uh, going down what was a sort of VIP line adjacent to where the public were going and, of course, not having to queue. Now, all hell broke loose about this. They've been the subject of, I think, a ridiculously over-the-top campaign. There's 20,000 people have signed a petition to have them fired. Of course, they shouldn't be fired. It's ridiculous. It may have been a misjudgment. I said myself on this show, I don't think anyone should have been jumping the queue full stop, whoever you are, unless you're a world leader and you, there's obviously there's a time issue. Um, they, they went on the programme this morning and said this. Holly said this on the programme today. The rules were that we would be quickly escorted around the edges to a platform at the back. In contrast, those paying respects walked along a carpeted area beside the coffin and were given time to pause. None of the broadcasters and journalists there took anyone's place in the queue and no one filed past the Queen. We, of course, respected those rules. However, we realized that it may have looked like something else and therefore totally understand the reaction. Please know that we would never jump a queue. What do you make of that? I mean, look, I, full disclosure, I'm a good friend of Holly's. I feel very sorry. She's absolutely distraught, I think, about the reaction. No, well, it's true. But um, I mean, and genuinely, there was a, a clearly in her head a blurring of the line about work. If you're working and you're covering it, I think a lot of journalists went through there. Isabel did. I know other journalists who did it and haven't been subjected to all sure. this. But, but is it the old-fashioned thing of the British are the best at queuing in the world, right to the point somebody tried to jump in? Right. Well, it, it just also became like this... It grew, that feeling, mm. as the days went by, you know. So suddenly, now it became like, at the end, it became like, you know, cutting a queue at Mecca. You know, because I mean, it, was it was so long because and it was so, so long. arduous. But, but, but it also and there were veterans become... and 90-year-olds and so on, right? But it was the statement. The, whole, the waiting was the statement itself. And yes. so that's why it kind of got as it did. But, you know, these things kind of take off, as we know. You remember during Diana's funeral when suddenly there was that whole thing about where's the, where's the flag on top of Buckingham yes. Palace? And suddenly, I was editing the Mirror of the Times absolutely. demanding they lower it. That's right. And so things like that, they build and they have to... They get very cathartic. Richard, I mean, Theresa May jumped the queue and nobody seemed to bat an eyelid. Um, other politician, Angela Rayner, I think, the Labour deputy leader, she jumped the queue. Um, you was, didn't. You, you queued, actually. I queued. I was... I was so your, your own course. partnership, you were split down the middle Absolutely between split. queuing and... We took a very different view on it. And, yeah. you know, that's and what, what was your view out of interest? No, my view was I wanted to join the queue, I wanted to, to be there to experience it and to go mm. through it. And you've no idea, frankly, whether it's going to be two hours, five hours or, or ten hours. But I was there, and there were moments where you think, wow, this is a real thing. Mm. And, but look, I, I loved it. I don't regret it. For a minute, and, you know, with the joys of technology, you can work a bit on the old smartphone and whatever. That's fine. Um, so, but, you know, other people took a different view. Holly and, and Philip, look, in a sense, 
They made a judgment, and it's turned out to be a misjudgment. And yeah, but I don't, think they, I don't think this there public a, flogging that's no, going on, it, I think it's a, got a bit the, out of the hand. The MPs and peers did not need four passes. Maybe one for their other half, but they didn't need four passes. No, I mean, I think they... Actually, it was, I, there have been some funny memes about this. Domino's Pizzas put out a tweet uh, <laughs> saying they were going to be delivering... Sorry for any... Apologies for everyone waiting, but they've just taken an order from Holly and <laughs> Phil. And actually, the best thing they could probably both do is, is just have a laugh about it and get on with it. Now, I don't think anyone... <laughs> Yeah, the, the venom of social media. I've been on the receiving end. You know, I used to do a morning show before them um, in the next door studio. I had to vacate mine for not believing old Princess Pinocchio. I mean, the world's gone nuts. <laughs> so I say, let's end. Get over let's, it. let's end the petition. End the petition. Um, <laughs>